Kia ora everybody, welcome back to the podcast. This is Creative Curiosity and I'm your host, my name is Tehuni Tuna. Uh, today I wanted to talk about how being a perfectionist has negatively affected my work and progress. Um, most of my life uh, in terms of creativity I've done done well and because of me doing well um, I haven't really had those harsh failures or lessons to learn from. I've had a couple along the way. <clears throat> um, but from things going well, um, I, contrib- I contribute a big part of that um, due to, you know, being a perfectionist and, you know, making sure every little detail is right. And don't get me wrong, you know, to a huge extent, um, it's a good thing you know, in creativity, you know, being a perfectionist with your work. But the angle that I'm coming from is in terms of when the work that you create, um, let's say you're creating multiple pieces and you have a timeline and a deadline for these pieces to be created in. But because of your, because of my perfectionist um, tendencies, if you can put it that way, I... Um, you know, scrutinize over maybe too much, and then because of all of that scrutiny over all of these minuscule details on one piece, it leaves little time for those other pieces that are supposed to be done, um, you know, in this certain time frame, and that's what that's what um, has happened to me in the past a lot. Um, let's say I do a body of work and I do four paintings. Oh, no, here's a perfect example. I did five paintings back in 2012 for one of my assignments uh, at Wintech when I was studying art. And one painting was, um, they were all paintings of like muscle men and they were personifications of different art forms that I participated in. One had pencils and pens, obvious regions, obvious reasons one had paintbrushes um one had a tattoo on his back representing my tattoo you know my tattoo sort of um career and the next one was kapaka <clears throat> and then the last one was music because at the time i was in a band with my brothers and some of my cousins and mates and the first painting out of that whole series, or the first couple of paintings out of that whole series were really, really good. Like, if you looked at them, it was very obvious that they had a lot more effort and time put into them. And then the very last painting, which was the drawing painting, um, super sloppy. Like, it's, it's it's all right. Just all right. Like, not even better than all right. And it was because I had to do it in one night. And the other paintings, I had, like, weeks to do them. <clears throat> And that was because of the me trying to be a perfectionist and not being good at time management. <clears throat> so that also rolls on to, um, you know, this day and age with the internet and social media and, um, you know, having a personal brand and <clears throat> using your social media to market your products and services. So one of the lessons that I've learned, uh, big lessons that I've learned from Gary V, is about content just putting out valuable content um whether that be creating it or collating and sharing other content that was created by other people and um you know my perfectionist sort of <clears throat> tendencies have always made me overthink um what i'll share and what i'll post in the past um, there's still part of it now you know and there'll be if you go back through my social media feed and you look at chunks of time when I didn't post for days or weeks at a time I can contribute that or attribute that to a couple of reasons one either I was in a rut or two overthinking you know trying to think that every post is supposed to be perfect um, or thinking that oh no one's going to care about this post or you know no one's going to like this this post or whatever but um, what I've been learning and uh, I've been learning about it logically and um, I've been practicing it lately and 
through practice and experience, um, you know, you begin to understand the benefits of not being a perfectionist. So, you know, just sharing things. For me, I learned that, um, you know, this is in terms of social media. I learned that from Gary Vee, he put up a perfect, um, you know, a brilliant post saying, don't treat your news feed, oh, your news feed, don't treat your timeline, whatever you call it, like an art gallery, you know, expecting every single post to be super, super perfect, um, you know, and also to share on your page what you'd like to be known for. And for me, um, you know, what you'd like to be known for instead of what you would like to be liked for, which is, you know, there are plenty of people, plenty of people, plenty of times that I've posted in the past when I would just post things that I know people will comment on or people will like, which is usually like to do with my art stuff. And getting to the point now where I just post stuff that I think is um, interesting, uh, valuable, um, thought-provoking sometimes. Like, I've, I've really been interested in... Um, sparking dialogue and having conversations with people um you know just to find out um you know different angles of things that i believe <clears throat> um and also with like posting videos and stuff because i've because of my mate uh baba <clears throat> him and his partner Radine, they've been they've created a challenge to upload a video every day for the for two weeks and I jumped on board with that. And the reason I wanted to jump on board is because I've done it in the past, you know, where I'll, I'll do a video every day, but it only lasts for a few days. And the reason it only lasts for a few days is because I overthink and I, you know, I keep thinking, like, I'll, I'll do one really, really good video, and then the next video won't be good. And then I'll think, like, ah, oh, man, like, I don't really want to put that up. It's not that good. And um, now just understanding that, um, you know, just putting stuff out, um, you know, even if it's just a bit valuable, um, you're learning from each time you post something or each time you, you share something, especially if it's something you've created. And um, I think I'll end this podcast with uh, something that I heard of, don't directly quote me, this is paraphrasing from what I remember, and it was a test. So there were art students, two groups of art students, um, one group got told um, for this assignment, your grade is going to be determined by one piece that you create. You know, so just create one piece and your whole grade is determined on how good that one piece is. And then the other half of the group, um, their grade was determined by the quantity and the amount of work that they created. And over that 30 days, I think it was a real experiment that happened. Um, if you know... Um, you know, put it in the comments below. Um, obviously, you know where this is going. The group that created a piece, or you know, created for quantity, ended up, um, you know, their final piece ended up being way, way better than the group that was only focused on just trying to get one thing, or you know, trying to create one perfect piece. And the reason for that is every iteration of their artwork that they created, they learned something, and then they would um, reflect, develop, create, reflect, develop, create, reflect, develop, create. And through that reflection and development, um, you know, you're solving problems that you couldn't have otherwise foreseen. Whereas if you're creating just the one single piece and you're trying to make that perfect, the only way that a piece can be really, really good, in my opinion, is knowing what um, elements to omit, what elements to leave out, you know, and you can't know what elements to leave out if you haven't experimented. Um, but yeah, so I leave that with you. Uh, if you're an artist, you'll probably struggle with this in some way, I'm sure, you know, trying to create really, really good work. Um, I'm trying, yeah, I'm using this new sort of approach to things to try and create work that is really, really good as opposed to trying to expect every single piece to be a masterpiece. Um, and to be okay with 
not every piece being a masterpiece, <clears throat> which was my um, approach before. But yeah, I hope you all has gained some sort of um, informative value from this. Uh, let me know uh, what, other, what other topics you would like me to cover. <clears throat> and if you're out there, just share. You know, if you're on social media, share the stuff that you like. Um, because guarantee you, there are going to be other people who like the same stuff as you, no matter how obscure it may seem. But, Modi thank you, fellas, for tuning in. My name is Dehonu Tuna, and this is Creative Curiosity.